on this episode of Rack. Spring arrives early, bringing violent weather that wreaks havoc across Chicago's roadways. April showers bring May flowers, isn't that how it goes? Hey, pigeon toe it, get that nose going. A rolled semi leaves Bill's hands full. An abandoned trailer with barrels of mystery chemicals could be a problem for all of Chicago. All non-essential emergency personnel must leave the area. While torrential rains and thawing ice trap a 25-ton dump truck in a dangerous sinking mud pit. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Gotta make you think. That's what's fun about it. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare Towing with his wife, Marcy, his brother, Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. For most in Chicago, the beginning of spring is a welcomed time of year. Brutal winter snowstorms finally subside while temperatures rise. But for the team at O'Hare Towing, the shift in seasons is no picnic. Melting ice can flood highways and open up treacherous pits of muck and sludge, while warming weather patterns bring crushing heat waves and violent rainstorms. Our weather, which you can pretty well predict, is, is that it's going to be unpredictable. And almost right on cue, O'Hare gets word that the warming temperatures have brought the first big rollover of the season. Bill, I have a Naperville PD called in on a rollover on a dump truck. It's on Route 59 and 88. A dump truck loaded with sand ran into heavy traffic brought out by the spring weather. The driver was cut off, locked his brakes, and flipped his rig. We were told we had a uh, dump truck with a load of sand overturned. One lane, half the load in the truck, half the load over the guardrail in the ditch line. It's a big mess, and police want O'Hare to clear the site as quickly as possible. Block it, move those over. But a tight workspace isn't the only challenge O'Hare is facing. My big problem is that stinking street light. A light pole is extremely close to where one of the rotator's boom arms needs to be positioned. You know, I hit one of these street lights last week and it was ugly and I'm now I think I'm overly nervous. I had to position the boom of Mia in a particular position so we could do a, an end roll. The end roll is a specialized procedure for uprighting overturned vehicles. By squeezing the boom of one rotator just beneath the overhead light pole and placing a second rotator at the front end of the truck, the team will have enough clearance to lift the truck and upright in the confined one lane space. Hey, I'm almost ready to go. Are you snug? Let's go. Hey, pigeon toe it. Get that nose going. If it doesn't scoot and jump too much, we're almost there. Once everything is hooked up and ready to go, the team can finally begin to lift and roll the truck. Got you. Let's go. The team has to be extremely careful. There are only a few inches between the light pole and 902's boom. The team places wood blocks beneath the truck's tires to keep it from rolling once it's uprighted. Give me that big one. With everything in place, they continue the roll. Ready? Yeah. The truck comes down hard. But the crew checks all their equipment. Nothing is damaged. Good. With the truck back on all its wheels, it's hooked up to a wrecker and hauled back to the lot. But O'Hare's job isn't done yet. 
The team still has to clear the tons of sand from the highway. Sorry, John. And they'll need every hand available to help out, including Bill's daughter, Amanda, who's home from college on spring break. Get on the other side and all the debris and crap through on this side and we can get it with the bucket, okay? I had a very unique experience today because of Amanda being home from uh, college. Uh, she was able to come out there and give me a hand and it was just a real cool thing for me to spend some time with my daughter that way. And during the cleanup, Amanda experiences a side effect of spring weather that the rest of the O'Hare crew usually don't have to put up with. This car drives by and the guy yells, you're too pretty to be out here. I'm not here to just look pretty, I actually can do work. As soon as he gives you some room, get out of here. Thank you. See you next time. Coming up, the spring weather goes from sunshine to violent rain showers. Liquid sunshine, baby. And the downpour threatens to slip up the recovery of a 25-ton machine as it hovers precariously in the air. Hey, stop, hey, stop. And later, Trike uncovers a load of barrels filled with questionable contents. Got a hazmat issue. It's springtime in Chicago, and the warming temperatures have been keeping O'Hare busy all over town. Flowers are blooming, birds are singing, snow is melting, which means we're going to have a lot of mud as this ground thaws out. It's going to turn soupy, it's going to turn mushy. Another pitfall of the thawing ice and snow are dangerous potholes that open up on the city's roadways. A big rig hauling a 25-ton hydraulic lift hit a massive pothole. Its oversized cargo became dislodged and busted through the trailer. The driver was able to make it back to O'Hare's lot that evening. Bill and the crew are up and at him early the next morning to lift the load and secure it on a new flatbed. Not all the tricky lifts happen on the road. Lifting 50,000 pounds is still a demanding operation with plenty of chances for things to go wrong. It's a big son of a bitch. The load is so heavy, Bill decides to use three drivers and three heavy duties to lift the massive machine. The machine had slid on the original trailer, and when it slid, the wheels punched through the wood, and then the machine was actually rubbing on the tires of the trailer. But right before the team can start with the recovery, the skies open up and the spring showers begin to rain down. April showers bring May flowers, isn't that how it goes? Bill may be making light of the rain, but the team needs to be extremely careful. The rain increases the risk that something could slip during the lift and cause the enormous load to come crashing down. We're gonna put some mud flaps by the uh, rams and by the boom so we don't scratch anything. One on each side. I thought it was cheap insurance. If I would put my raincoat on, it would have stopped raining. Liquid sunshine, baby. Yep, Chicago. Whenever you're ready. Cedric, Trike, and Jameson are at their controls while Bill calls the shots. Run it from over here and pick up a little weight. Okay, center it up. Hey, hit on this side a little. Slow down, said. That might catch up. No more. With the load high enough, it's time to swap the damaged flatbed for a new one. Hey, get him out, slow. The new trailer must carefully back into position, threading the needle between the heavy duty trucks and the hovering lift. The straighter you can get it, the easier life is, so just take your time, we can hold it all day. There's only a limited amount of space on each side, so the driver must be extremely precise. Get eye contact with the driver. With the new trailer in position, the team must work in sync to lower the lift onto the flatbed. Focus your concentration on the machine. I don't want it kind of pick it and follow it down. One wrong move and the enormous machine could slip off balance and crash through the new trailer. Just focus on the machine. You ready? <laughs> hey! Stop! Stop! 
Cedric sledding his side down faster, while Trike and Jameson are struggling to keep up. Going down faster. Said stop. Bill halts the process to get the guys back on the same page. Mike, let it down. No. Stop. Pick it up a little bit, Mike. Keep letting it down, Said. Stop. Bill gets the team back in unison so they can finally lower the lift onto the trailer. Okay, stop. Boom down a little bit and then boom in. Stop. I think that's pretty close. Winch is down. With the lift now safely on the trailer, the driver secures it for its destination across town to a shipping yard. I realized one of the, the, my favorite things about living in Chicago is we get to experience all the seasons. And it's something that I learned early on that I can't control, roll with the punches and have fun with it. Meanwhile, the rain continues to pour, creating a muddy stew that's trapping vehicles all over the city. O'Hare can barely keep up with the calls that are pouring in. I hate to say it, but when the weather gets bad, we get busy. Mother Nature is kind of showing everybody who's boss, that's all. But the citywide rain isn't just causing problems in the dirt and mud. Try 310, start heading towards North Lake, uh, abandoned trailer, it's nose dive and leaning right now. In a parking lot across town, a rain-soaked trailer has buckled under its own weight and punched through the pavement. The trailer is abandoned, and when Trike arrives, he soon discovers just what caused it to nosedive. It's loaded with old, dusty foam books in the front, and this trailer doesn't hold water very well. That's what made her sink. But on closer inspection, Trike discovers the trailer is loaded with more troubling cargo than some waterlogged phone books. You got a hazmat issue. The trailer's loaded with six 55 gallon drums filled with a mysterious, hazardous waste. Did you guys already notify EPA? He said he's gonna go ahead and have the fire department come out and check it out first. They got six barrels, I don't know what the hell is in it. And after a quick glance at the barrel's mystery contents, the authorities immediately evacuate the scene. All non-essential emergency personnel must leave the area. Coming up, with more rain on the way, the hazardous waste threatens more than just the recovery of the abandoned trailer. If it mixes in with this water, we're gonna have a big problem because we got the reservoir right there. And later, the acres of muck and sludge trap the biggest vehicle yet, a 25-ton dump truck. What's that for but will Trike be sunk trying to dig it out? Veteran towing operator Mike Trike Trikowski is at the scene of an abandoned trailer that's collapsed under the tremendous water weight caused by the relentless spring rain. You got a hazmat issue. But when multiple barrels of mystery chemicals were discovered, the fire department was called in and the area evacuated. Yes, sir. All non essential emergency personnel must leave the area. There's nothing to do now but wait as the fire department determines if the chemicals are safe to work around. During the downtime, Dwight shows up with a tractor intended to haul away the trailer. But if the scene isn't declared safe soon, he may be going back to headquarters empty-handed. I don't know what's going on. I was called out there to try to be my help out here. After a few hours, EPA officials determine the substance inside the trailer is a corrosive chemical that's been abandoned by a local printing company. It's a scholastic acid. It's a cleaner. It's nasty, nasty stuff. If it mixes in with this water, we're going to have a big problem because we got the reservoir right there. The material is corrosive, but the crew is determined that it's safe to work around. By the time Dwight and Trike get to work, the trailer has sunk so deep that the new tractor that Dwight brought out won't fit under it, so Trike goes to work raising it. Where this gets dangerous, we've already busted through. That's where I gotta work fast. The trailer's steadily sinking. Once 
Once the trailer is stabilized, Trike unhooks his winch lines and pulls out of the way while Dwight backs in. After a quick hookup, Dwight hauls the trailer back to the yard where its chemical contents will be properly disposed. But Trike isn't done dealing with the soggy weather just yet. He hurries across town to where a truck hauling 25 tons of construction refuse has sunk over a half foot into a mud pit in the backyard of a house under construction. Trike's first plan of action is to attach a half inch chain to the front of the truck and pull its front wheels onto the blacktop. The truck weighs about 50,000 pounds. What I need to do is I need to get this front end up. It seems like the truck is coming out just fine, but then Trike notices a problem. This big block of cement concerns me. We're gonna get that piece of cement out of there. We don't have to worry about it tangling up in that oil pan. But before he can remove the cement block, Trike must lift the front end of the truck. With the cement block out of the way, Troy can resume freeing the sunken truck. But before the driver can clear the back tires, a new problem emerges. If I have to, I'll cut that off. The fence at the other side is actually in the swing room where we need for this truck. So I'm going to make the hole in the fence a little bigger. Think about this. I get paid to get muddy. I'm living every kid's dream. Finally, with the fence out of the way, Troy can direct the driver out of the yard and into the alley. Nice and easy. There you go. Keep her rolling. Keep her rolling. Keep her rolling. Put it down. Put it. Keep your foot down. Success at last. Oh, no, no. That was a good challenge. I like it. I love a challenge. Got to make you think. That's what's fun about it. Coming up, a semi collides with the bridge on a busy highway. We're getting ready just before morning rush hour. And leaves the multi-ton cargo teetering on the edge of disaster. Whoa, whoa, ah, whoa. The tumultuous spring weather has been keeping O'Hare's operators busy all week. After three straight days of rain, the storm clouds have finally started to break up. But the clear skies offer little reprieve. Base to 316 said, 310 trike. Need for both of you guys start heading towards 290 at First Avenue. We have a container, hit a bridge. A tractor trailer hauling a sea container hit a bridge overpass and dislodged its cargo. The container is teetering on the edge of the trailer. But unlike most of the wrecks of the past few days, this collision wasn't caused by inclement weather. This particular container is what they call a high box, which had put this truck over 13 foot six inches, which is the maximum legal height. But what happened was, is this driver was going down the road and he had struck a couple of the bridges. This is I-290. We're getting ready just before the start of morning rush hour on a Friday. Knowing the interstate will soon flood with morning commuters, Trike and Cedric want to get the rig out of traffic as quickly as possible. 
I'll grab the back, pick it, try to get the weight over. Once we get the weight over, we'll back him up the ramp, and then we'll deal with it up there. But even though the rain stopped hours ago, doesn't mean their work is any less perilous. Whoa! Lost my balance. Too early in the morning. <laughs> Once their lines are taut, Trike lifts the back end of the container, while Cedric winches it back onto the trailer. With the container far enough on the trailer to be stable, the guys back it up the ramp to a safer location to finish the job. With the rig at the top of the ramp and out of harm's way, Trike and Cedric can secure their winch lines to either end of the container and lift it off the trailer. Both winches. The driver pulls the damaged trailer out from underneath and swaps it out for a lower, road-certified low boy. Instead of it being four and a half feet up, which is dock height, we're carrying it at three feet, so you actually are able to make it under most of the bridges around here and you don't have any problems with it. Perfect. All that's left is to secure the container. It's another successful recovery for the O'Hare team. And after a week of frenzied spring weather, a nice return to business as usual for the weather-weary crew. It's very rare for us to have the ability to do something like this in our own yard. We don't have traffic, we don't have police. So when I have the opportunity to do like a little on-the-job training, and you know, go through the rigging process and over explain everything I do. There's a tremendous hidden value for me when I can get new guys, you know, Cedric and Jameson, and they'll be talking about this for weeks and I can refer to it to get them to be able to, you know, be better operators and handle it on their own.